this has just been a nonstop fabulous trip when we had such a good time. We did. Such a good time. So what can you tell me more about what your what your experience of being my mom is? What your experience of being a mom of, of somebody that has something that's a little different? Well, it, you know, I've, I have thought a little bit about that. And um, the fact that you were our first child, we didn't know any different. It wasn't like we already had other children that we kind of had expectations. The, we didn't know any different. And you really led the way on so many things. And the fact that you are so independent and, you know, from the very beginning, her mantra was, I can do it myself as a little kid, just standing there monitoring, making sure that if she could try to do it herself and that she wasn't gonna hurt herself or anybody else. And it's, it's interesting. I think it would have been a completely different experience if we had had other children and then being presented with, with this kind of a difference and a little bit of a challenge. But we were really dictated by what she wanted to and could do but as an infant we were kind of being led by by professionals and suggestions and um and family members and you know what to do or not do and there was a lot of um a lot of input of course from family about the, uh, different aspects of you know surgery or not surgery and that was uh very interesting um when you were really little but then you know as you got older and started um, enforcing your independence. It, it, we really just took your lead. And I remember talking to uh, some other parents who had children with limb differences, specifically um, the upper body limb differences. And uh, one mother who had other children and then had a, a child with a limb difference, adamant about you have to get out there and protect them and you 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 know they shouldn't go to public schools and you you needed to keep them home and and i thought that doesn't make a lot of sense to me that you need to you know have give them exposure to the world and the realities of the world and certainly be there for support and whatever protection you might need to do but just being there to support you and really like i said just taking your lead what you wanted to do, what you wanted to try, and trying to do whatever we could to make those realities. If you were interested in whatever it was, we always thought soccer would be a good sport or something, a good activity for you because you'd have to use hands and you didn't, could care less about soccer. Baton was something you wanted and I labored about that, putting you in that situation of um, trying to do something that you, that you wouldn't be able to do like the other kids do it. And, and, and so in the end, I contacted the, the um, baton instructor leader, I'm not yeah, sure what her there. title was, um, and said, okay, here's the thing. Sarah's in third grade, so you were eight. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know she wants to be in baton with, with her classmates and this is the situation. And the instructor was awesome and she said, not a problem. You know, she'd had other children with um, different issues. And she says, we will just try out different batons and see what will work best for you and make adaptations. And and she, you know, was very accommodating and said not to worry that they would make it work. And they did. You were marched in parades and in all kinds of different performances with your baton. So anything that she that she wanted to try, we, we always tried to figure out how to make that happen. Pretty much you could figure out one way or another, how to do it, riding a bike, you know, whether you need an, an adaptive device or not. Um, we, we always just try to, you know, accommodate whatever we thought you might need or, or what you told us that you needed. So, and I know that's a little different. Some, some kids I think might not be as open about this is what I want to do. And, and this is how you, you know, you need to help me make it happen. Um, <laughs> but she, um, you know, I think we were very lucky in that you were always very independent. When I appreciate that, like from, from my memories of growing up and trying things, there's very little that I felt from you, like you as my parents that I could or couldn't do. Um, and, and that I, I didn't think that baton would be a problem for me. Like, isn't that kind of a beautiful thought? Like I, I was eight and I, my friends were doing it. It looked fun. I, I definitely come from more of that dance background, not 
soccer. Nope, that's not, nope, not me. I tried, I tried other sports. I tried basketball and like, that was cute. That was cute for a minute, but. So, so I never felt that those are barriers, but I appreciate that there was sort of that, that labor and that debate that as a parent, like, do you want to put your child in this situation? If maybe your child is aware or not aware, do you want to put limits on them or not? Like I, I see how that, and, and I appreciate you you were saying that statement of, of sort of labored about something and going back and forth in your head that was like, okay, well, if, if my child does want to do this activity, how can I support them so that they have, you know, the, the best opportunity to be able to do that effectively or successfully? In in doing something like baton, I my instructor had two hands, my my, my fellow majorette colleagues fellow majorettes had two hands. So, so I'm the only one that's going to be doing it slightly differently. Um, so there, there is a, a sort of a learning curve and, and sort of a fumbling mistake making process that comes along with that and that that is okay, but being able to set that up in that environment up so that, um, we can effectively make those mistakes and be able to find somewhere to be, to be successful in that. So I appreciate giving the space for kids to do that versus having a very little space for mistake or error making mm. and, and sort of jumping in and correcting the child and, um, you know, not allowing them to, to sort of have that uh, problem solving, figuring out approach. Cause I feel like in that figuring out, I'm also learning how my body works. I, I feel that I have pretty decent body awareness sort of as a result of, of trying lots of different things and involving lots of different parts of my body. I, I know sometimes in baton, it was like, okay, well maybe I do this in my wrist or this in my elbow or, or this in my other elbow to be able to have sort of a similar skill. But then also not allowing that, that space to be too much with a child make so many mistakes that they're not really sure how to get out of it and don't have a lot of support or direction. And then they just fail because because failing outright and not being able to find a way we're like, okay, well, if I just, you know, I'm stronger in, in these things and then I see how there's a pathway to me being able to get the skill. Maybe I can't get it today, but I, but I see the pathway. Whereas it was having, um, you know, too unstructured of an environment then, um, and then the child can't see the pathway out, then that's just failure. And then we can't see that clear pathway. And then that, that doesn't feel really great either. Um, and, and I also try to suggest that for parents too, that it's like, well, if, if a kid is learning how to tie their shoes or, or they're learning how to, to button or zipper or any of those things, um, have the space for them to be able to try it, kind of see how it's going. Um, and then if it's like, they're really struggling and starting to get frustrated, then like, okay, let's interject with some suggestions or just like, maybe that's where we're done for that skill of today. We, we do it with the support and then move on. Um, and maybe come back to that and revisit that skill tomorrow or, or later on. Your dad and I were always adamant from, you know, the day you were born that we would, we would never set limits on you. That, and we had that discussion that we would never say you can't do something. Do you have any um, things that you wish that you would have known or, or any big things that you like to tell sort of new parents or maybe just finding out and maybe haven't even met their baby yet. Maybe they found these out through ultrasounds or, um, or maybe somebody who has had a child that just acquired something that might, might navigate or alter their, their lives a little differently than what they had thought. Well, it, you know, with, with everything, with life, hindsight is twenty twenty, And if we known that there were, um, resources and in Shriners hospital, they were, they were fantastic, but it would have been nice. I think for you and, and for us, probably if we'd been able to connect with other children that had, uh, limb differences, I think that, I don't know that it would have made things easier for you, but you know, just maybe had a little different perspective on, on things. I think that would have been helpful. And now that, you know, this YouTube channel, a lot of other resources are available oh, for yeah. parents out there now, which I think is, I, I think that's fabulous. And that would have been nice to have had, you know, 30 years ago. And because I think that, you know, every kid is different. And uh, Sarah's sister is, is very different from, from Sarah. And I think if, if uh, your sister had had a limb difference, I think the story would have been a little different. Mm -hmm. maybe even completely different than what your story is and, and how we would have handled things and reacted. So I think you really have to take the lead of the child mm -hmm. and just be there and understand that, that every child is different and 
um, kind of be aware and, and um, perceptive of what the child is needing and, um, and just kind of go with where they're going. What they're t trying to communicate they need and not you trying to communicate on them. No, you shouldn't do that because it would have been so easy. I have to be honest with you. That would have been so easy to say, no, Sarah, the ton isn't, isn't something that, that you should be involved in. How about we go over to whatever? And, I, you know, so it was hard. That was one of the hardest, hardest things I remember having to deal with is making that phone call to the instructor and saying, you know, look, here's the thing. She really wants to do this. And I, I just don't know. I, I, I have no idea how this works. But then also having that instructor, Deanna, being so receptive and, you know, really calming my fears and, and um, saying, no, not a problem. We, we can make it work. So, yeah. but it would, like I said, it would have been so easy to say, no, not doing baton, we've got these other activities that we, and I think that would have been a real loss because she had a great time with it. No, I did it for five years. I did it all through uh, oh, third yeah. grade through eighth grade. Um, and I would have continued on into high school, but our high school just didn't have, I would have And the experiences that we got to have because of it, because of the parades that she was in and the different performances that, that she was involved in, you know, we would go and watch. And I mean, some of the, the uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade in Old yeah. Town, Sacramento. It was very cool. And to be able to be there and, which we probably wouldn't have do, done if you hadn't been in the parade, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long really week. Fun. It's I been know. the best. It's just been a fabulous week. It has it's been. It's been so wonderful. Oh, I love you so much. I love you so much.